Hi, this is Here With Jesus, or we are, kind of, we are Here With Jesus. <clears throat> and uh, I've kind of been wanting to do this video for a little while now. Fern had suggested that she interview me about what's going on in the ministry, and I thought that might be a good way to uh, frame this video, so that you could hear from her questions of me, what's going on in the, in the uh, ministry, She's the one that mostly knows everything that's going on in the ministry, because when I come home, I tell her everything that happened during that day. So she has a unique perspective. There are, uh, when I put out update, updates on uh, what happened during the day, it's usually only about one conversation that I had. Maybe sometimes I'll include two, a couple pictures. But uh, I usually have more than just that one event that happens throughout the day. So... <clears throat> With that in mind, uh, I, I also want to make this video about something that's upcoming, an upcoming event on uh, Saturday, the, what, what, uh, the date? It's uh, Saturday, January 22nd, Would 2022. Yes, the 22nd of 2022, so. It's the Blessing Bag <coughs> Packing Party um, at our church which is a big part of the ministry that I do down there. I take blessing bags, I take backpacks. Uh, we, we got a bunch of, uh, I found out that there's more inexpensive backpacks to give out down there called drawstring backpacks, which uh, the reason for going the more inexpensive way is people cannot hold on to their backpacks for any length of time down there. So uh, they're always getting stolen and uh, it's, it's easier to replace and uh, they seem to really like these drawstring backpacks so and you can fit a lot into them and it just seemed the way to go so we will be doing that this coming Saturday which maybe by the time you see this video will be long gone but uh, we just wanted to share with what's going on at the church that we go to all the different people that are supporting us and uh, going to be bringing stuff to fill in the backpacks uh there's a lot of different things and right now it's in the wind we're in the midst of the cold weather so we want to do a lot of uh, hand warmers and gloves and socks things things that are of the season to help them through it because it's got to be rough down there the other day i was down there 28 degrees and you know i was handing out uh hand warmers and they were just so appreciative even I wanted to stretch them out as much as possible so I didn't want to give one person five hand warmers which would have been nice to be able to do but uh, so I'm handing out and gloves I was handing out too and they were all so appreciative of it and uh, also along with it I made up these stickers that say uh, Jesus is your friend that I stick on each handbag uh, or not handbag hand warmer bag so they get a little bit of it and, and they all know the people that I give to I have many repeat customers people that I, I see all the time so uh, I which I give out ice cream car ice cream slash coffee cards but even in 28 degrees there were people who were cashing them in for ice cream instead of coffee which kind of blew my mind yeah <clears throat> mine too yes <laughs> and uh well, yesterday wasn't quite as cold, but there were people that one guy said, "Oh no, I won't, I don't want an ice cream on a day like today," and then the other guy was came back with an ice cream. So it's it's kind of interesting. And with the, with the ice cream cards, I always give out tracks that I make uh, uh, with with different things. And one guy actually said to me one time that uh, he keeps he had kept all the tracks because I hand out they're kind of different. And which made me want to make them even more different. Like I, I try to put out a different one, well, not every week, but I try to, you know, customize them now instead of just them all being the same. When I first started, I gave out those nail tracks that had like a nail through the hand, and saying this is a reminder of what he did for us. That was uh, that was how I began, and I gave them out for a long, long time, and then I just decided to do something different. And then this guy said, I actually have uh, the different tracks that you've given me taped up on my wall. And I, I thought, wow, that's 
that's really kind of cool to hear. So uh, he's he's kind of meditating on the fact that Jesus is the way, and that's what the tracks are all about. So uh, I guess I kind of rambled there for a little while. I don't even know what she's going to ask me now because I've covered everything, right? Yeah, I don't know either. <laughs> Barely covered everything. But so, my darling, this yes. is Fern, my wife. Yes, my love. <laughs> um, I don't know. We're going to have to probably cut this little part out because I don't know where to go. A few moments later. So, um, do you go down every day? Mondays and Tuesdays from 11 to 1. In the summer, it was 11 to 1 o'clock. I would be there for a solid two hours. But as it got colder, uh, I'm not up to stand in there. I'm not up to be in there for two full hours in 28 degree temperature. So I, I now go, I hand out the stuff, and if I'm into a conversation that demands a little bit more attention and for me to stay, I'll stay longer. Uh, the last couple of days with Pastor Ron down there, I have been actually, yesterday was actually longer than two hours. So, <laughs> yeah. so it's hard to say, but the plan was in the beginning was uh, to go there for uh, Monday, Tuesdays, and then Wednesdays I would go to the food pantry uh, with uh, uh, at Victory Outreach. But uh, they've been sort of shut down for about a month now, so they're going to be starting up pretty soon. So I'm going to uh, I'm going to be starting that up again. Uh, but while they were down, I was just taking Wednesday as kind of a day off to do things around the house, which everybody knows that has to be done too. And then Thursdays and Fridays down there uh, between 11 and 1 on the, in the summer. But the weather weather has the winter weather has changed that those plans a little bit. Right. All of this, these items that you give out to people, where do they come from? Well, let me see. A lot of different sources. I'm trying to think of when, when, I, when I first began, they, uh, I did a lot of <clears throat> dollar store purchasing. And uh, as time went on, I start. We all. I started going to a place, some of the thrift shops, and there's a place up in uh, Soderton called Care and Share. That, uh, or is it Share and Care? Care and Share. Care and Share. I can never remember what order they come in. That uh, sells clothing and shoes by the pound. It's a dollar thirty a pound. So I get some really good deals up there, and I was getting. I was getting backpacks up there, and I was getting uh, lots of shoes because they, believe it or not, uh, they have the people. Some people steal other people's shoes while they're listening, while they're sleeping, while they're listening. Sorry. Uh, some people steal each other's shoes while they're sleeping, and uh, they wake up and they don't have any shoes. And uh, some people steal. They steal everything from each other down there. Back, not from each other. Some people don't steal, but some people do. And it, as soon as your back is turned, your backpack could be gone. Uh, so, I that so was the one things, source. So some things you provide by shopping for them, and then um, yeah, I know that because I'm not an outsider interviewing somebody I don't know this about. I'll just provide a little piece here that um, there are people who give to the ministry through our church and directly to us Yes. and uh, what we're able to do is take the receipts when, when we buy the items directly uh, we submit the receipts for reimbursement and if there's enough to, to cover that in the funds that have been donated then we get reimbursed and if not God's in charge of all of our finances, so we're just trusting Him for all of it. Yes. Um, so some of it we provide directly and we get reimbursed for. What are other ways that the items... Well, when we, when we first started, it was all like out of our pocket. You know, I was just going down there and uh, I didn't know how, how big and how much money we might be spending down there. So 
Uh, and then some people came alongside of us with nice gifts and made it possible and sort of like confirmed even just the fact that this was something that God wanted me to do. Yeah. And uh, so with the, with the first few gifts, uh, it really opened up going to the dollar store and being able to buy uh, really nice blessing bags uh, with a lot of different uh, care needs and things in them uh, that would that would truly bless the people down there. So, mm -hmm. uh, so what was your question again? So then, um, <laughs> now that we're in the winter months, we're finding that you are going down uh, as many days as you go. You're going and and giving out twenty or more packs of of hand warmers uh, every day, pretty much, um, because they're only good for one day. Uh, they're only good for a few hours, actually. It's like kind of sad. I wish they were. I wish they were better than they are, but yeah, they are what they are, and people are always grateful to get them. Yeah, that's what you've told us is that you know, they're always so grateful to receive them. So cool. Um, <laughs> um, uh, in the bags, we have snack items. So yeah. in the winter, they can be probably pretty much anything. Yeah. We usually go for snack bars and, and um, snack items, uh, like snack crackers. Um, in the summer, we just have to be careful to avoid chocolate and things that melt. Yeah. Um, so, not, not so much detail, perhaps, about the bags themselves. So, the other aspects of Here with Jesus, what, well, how much prayer do you get to participate in? let's say on an average day, what, what does your, just in broad strokes, what do, how do you approach going to Kensington? Okay, I'm going to Kensington today, and here's what I need to do to prepare mentally, spiritually, physically. Well, on my ride down there on 95, I'm always asking God to uh, bring me divine appointments. Uh, there's a lot of need down there. It's like an ocean of need, and I just can't meet everyone's need, and I, I just can't be everything to everybody, and I realize that. So uh, a big part of it is praying that God would bring the people that could possibly be open to it, and I do get quite a few of those people that uh, they get into the conversation with me, with me, and uh, they'll even ask for prayer. Sometimes I just offer prayer. As you know, I take a lot of individual pictures and uh, share them with uh, the people that are on my contact list uh, and, and tell them kind of a little bit of the story of what went on that day. So there's every day is different and it's really hard to just give a general uh, statement to that. I, uh, I don't know, I, I, I guess I mostly feel like with handing out the tracks and stuff and they know what I'm about and they, and I just mostly pray that uh, that God would anoint my words that they would be what the, the divine appointment needs and also that uh, uh, people would be receptive to it yeah and uh, I don't know there was another there was another thought there that I kind of lost and this is not rehearsed <laughs> <laughs> Could you tell? <laughs> uh, so, it, it's interesting when I try to wrap my head around what the entire thing is. It's all about glorifying Jesus and about giving the people down there the hope that they have in Jesus to escape the lives that they found themselves, you know, uh, stuck in. And a lot of people do feel stuck down there. I've had... Uh, I've had several people that are just... that They come up to me and uh, every time I see them, they know, they know I'm basically going to give them a uh, coffee ice cream card, ice cream coffee card, if, uh, if I have them. And I usually carry quite a few with me. So, uh, and there's a story about how those began too. But uh, the people will come up to me, and one of the first things they'll say is, oh man, we just want to get out of here. You know, this is, and, and it's like I hear this day in and day out, and it in a way, it gets kind of tiring for me to hear. I keep on telling him that Jesus is the way out, and I give them, I give them uh, flyers to go to the uh, 
the men's and women's home in New Jersey that Victory Outreach has. And uh, I, I, I try to encourage them in, in any way that I can. Uh, I don't have a whole lot of personal resources in that field, but just the fact that I can, I can kind of send them to a detox or to uh, uh, the Victory Outreach Home, it was a really good resource for me to get. I was glad when that ha actually happened, and that's only just been recent. Now they're supposed to be able, they're supposed to be having a detox there eventually, but they're not set up with that yet, or maybe they are, and I haven't been informed about it. I thought that they were right from the beginning, but it seems that that wasn't the case. So. Uh, uh, and then you also send them to a local church as a reference because, really. Their problem isn't the drug, and it isn't the addiction, it's sin. It's the fact that they're in a state of being lost, for the most part. Right. Um, and so they need salvation, first and foremost. And then, many times, with that act of, of being saved comes immediate deliverance from the addiction. But many times, it's it's a matter of having to walk it through with Jesus. So... For Brad to have the resource of, of Pastor Ron and his church. Uh, yeah, I, I, uh, he ha Ron has uh, uh, business cards printed up with his contact information, and uh, and his church is like right down there in that neighborhood. So if I detect that anybody is serious about uh, their uh, recovery and wanting to have Christian fellowship. Uh, I, I give them a business card and refer them to him because uh, Christian fellowship is so important and uh, a lot of people come up and you know they they know so much about the Bible and they actually seem like they should be out there with us helping the other people because but they're down there stuck and it's really a strange uh, I don't know strange when you talk to these people because they they seem to know so much, but I don't know whether it's how much hold it's actually taken on how they're living their lives and being really truly surrendered. And they're the ones that I think I suggest mostly uh, uh, Pastor Ron and his church because they really need fellowship. And I, I share that with them. And a lot of these people are very open to what I'm saying. And, and uh, ice cream opens up minds. Well, the, the act of uh, showing that you care for them. Yeah. More than... Absolutely. Uh, but the, I think one thing that distinguishes here with Jesus from perhaps many other ministries is the way that Brad is there on an almost daily basis. And they've seen him doing this for, what, it's over a year now? No, not doing, not, no, when I started down there, actually the whole thing started not doing the daily thing, and uh, I ran into a person that asked me, you know, when, when, when do you come down here, when can I see you, how do I, and I said, well, I don't come here on a regular basis, and that's what prompted the whole idea of starting out this daily uh, scheduled routine where people could, and, and I can tell, I tell them sometimes when we have a good conversation, I said, you know, anytime you see me and you want to talk, I'm here Monday, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays, so, but they see me all the, people do see me all the time, so they know that I'm kind of the ice cream man, sort of. And every time they <laughs> say that, he corrects them and says, no, I'm the Jesus man. Yeah, well, maybe not every time, but a lot of times. A lot of times. I try. <laughs> I try to make Jesus more... I usually, when I'm handing it to him, I say, "What well, Jesus is more important than this ice cream." I usually say that too. So, uh, yeah, the ice cream is just sort of a. Yeah, a lot of these people have been burned by the church, and they have this attitude that uh, Christians or people that are talking about Jesus, they just want your money and all that. And uh, <clears throat> I kind of want to override that attitude and let them see that. I'm there with a heart for them, and I, I want to give to them, and physically and spiritually. And that's what I used to say a lot when I would uh, hand out the blessing bags way back before I started doing the daily thing. And uh, 
I think that kind of made an impression on them. Yeah. Uh, so, is that all your questions? Um, well, for the moment, yeah, I can't. You have one more question really... for me? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> how, how is it possible that you do all of this stuff all by yourself? Well, some, there have been occasions where people have said that they want to go down with me. That hasn't happened a whole lot, but, you know, <clears throat> and sometimes I think I don't even know what I would do if somebody came down with me. It's like, because I'm used to just talking one-on-one. -on -one. But Pastor Ron, lately, we've kind of, he started a little while ago, and then I guess something in his life got busy. So he, uh, he couldn't continue there for a while but uh this monday he started up which you know two days ago three days ago <clears throat> two days ago and uh it seems like we're going to be kind of a tag team type of thing but uh it it, it has become very comfortable for me to be there by myself and you know just in the summertime when i would go down there i would have a chair a folding chair with me and i would just sit there and uh kind of like just observe what was going on and uh, when people would walk close to me or by me I'd say hey would you like an ice cream or they would see me and know me and they would come up to me uh, it was kind of a different thing now now I'm going down there and since I'm not setting up in a chair because it's too cold to just sit there in a chair I, uh, I walk around the area and I'm more actively giving out the the uh, tracks and the ice cream cards, so uh, it's become kind of a more of a big thing now. And I, I just want to thank everybody that has contributed uh, uh, cash for the ice cream cards. And, and let me tell you the story of the ice cream cards too. Oh, should I tell that story? It's up to you. But how long do you want this video to be? I don't know. Do you want to hear the story of the ice cream cards? <laughs> how they started? Well, I was giving out McDonald's gift cards. And uh, they were pretty expensive. And one guy came up to me, and uh, I hadn't seen him for a couple of weeks. And I didn't even remember giving him one. But uh, he came up to me, and he said, I, I got a confession to make. And I'm going like, oh, yeah? I'm like, I don't have no idea what this guy's going to confess. And he said uh, <clears throat> that, uh, I, that uh, McDonald's gift card you gave me, I traded it in for a bag of dope. And I'm going like, that really just was like, ah, <laughs> And I said, well, I thank you for being honest, but that sort of breaks my heart. And uh, and I just decided from that point on, I just couldn't give out. And I had, I think I had like maybe four or five of those cards left. They were $10 McDonald's gift cards. And I'm thinking, these people down here are hungry. They're going to want the $10 more for the food than they do for the dope. But that's not the case. If they get sick and they want to ward off that, they'll sell it. They'll sell it for $5. They get, basically, the stores down there will actually give you 40% of the of the gift card's value. So, I heard that they were getting $4 for a $10 gift card. I'm thinking, who would make that trade? But, uh, they do. And then when I found that out, I just decided I can't. But I wanted to, I you know, I, I wanted to have something to give these people. So, uh, I came up with the idea of these... Uh, ice cream gift cards and uh, the, the store had never had anything like that and I went in and I approached the the uh, owner and uh, actually it was the owner's son I talked to and I said what do you think about this and I pitched him the idea of me having uh, having some kind of card that I could pay them a dollar for and uh, give out to the people and he said, well, yeah, that's, you know, we, we, we do that, but we don't have any cards like that. So I said, well, I'll print them up. So I printed up 40 and uh, took them in the very next day. And he stamped on the, as I, you know, I paid him $40 and he stamped paid on the back of each one and he gave them back to me. And then I, that's what goes in with the tracks. So the, uh, the gift, the, the cards, and I call them tickets. And some, some people said, some people down there asked for vouchers, and I said, oh, one guy was mumbling, and I thought he said something about the vultures, and I'm going like, I, I don't know what you're talking about, vultures, 
And I finally got the idea that he was talking about the vouchers. I like the word coupon, but... Coupon, yeah. I don't know why tickets always ticket always comes out. But anyway, I, I designed the ticket, the voucher, the coupon, and uh, they just stamp it paid. And then after they after they've been through, they keep the tickets, vouchers or coupons, <laughs> and uh, we recycle them. I just they'll they'll give me back, and some of them get so ratty that I don't even want them back anymore. I say no, just destroy them. And then give me them, so I'll buy, I might have bought 35 back, and then I recycle them until they're just, you know, not recyclable anymore. So I keep on printing up new ones. And uh, th so that's the story behind the ice cream, coffee, hot chocolate vouchers, coupons, or tickets. <laughs> uh, a lot of people have asked me, it, it, what, what is funny is, like, I go up to somebody and say, would you like an ice cream? And they're looking at me like, if they haven't been through it before, because a lot of them have already been through it before, so they know what it's all about. I don't even have to explain it. But when I take the, the tract out, and the, the ticket's inside. I hand it to them, and I say, yeah, there's a ticket inside. And then I point down to the store, because the store is right across Kensington Avenue. And I say, you just go into the store, go to the cashier, hand them the ticket, and they'll give you a cup for ice cream or coffee. And uh, and so some people, when I first walk up to them, I say, you want an ice cream? They're looking at me like, you don't have an ice cream on you, do you? And I go, no, but this is just as good. So there's a lot of kind of humorous things that I that happen down there, too. Uh, but a lot of not so humorous things, too. A lot of very sad people living sad lives that can be changed by Jesus. And one thing I always try to be aware of is, too, that it's, I'm not trying to, I hate to use the word, sell Jesus for the idea of them cleaning up their lives and making their lives better. It's more the eternal value. It's more their eternal destiny. And I try to point that out a lot of times because, you know, my testimony is 41 years ago when Jesus came into my life, he delivered me from drugs. And I, I do press that point because, you know, you, you, this is not a good place for you to be living, I, I tell them. But, uh, and they know that. But uh, that's not just, that's not the gospel. The gospel is not Jesus can come into your life and deliver you from Kensington. The gospel is Jesus can come into your life, forgive you of your sins, and give you an eternal destiny. And that's, that's the heart of what I want to bring to these people. An eternal destiny in a good place, in heaven with the Father and all the other believers, as opposed to the eternal destiny that all of us have without that, which is that hell is awaiting us if we have not received Jesus. We all have an eternal destiny. It's just a question of which one will you choose. Yep. And if people really believed and knew what that 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 was, that's the truth. And I, that's the truth I try to send send home, is that you do have an eternal destiny, and there's only two different there's only two different ways. And the one girl was saying to me, uh, "Isn't there more?" And I go, "No, there's only two. And uh, well, anyway, well said, and thank you for being such a wonderful interviewer. <laughs> Um, for sure, you're welcome, and oh. thank you for the opportunity. Okay, and the last interview that we kind of did together, she hit me at the end with, uh, and this is, how do you say it, this is totally, totally un unrehearsed, unrehearsed yeah. was, ask the question again, do you remember it? If, if someone had told you a year ago that you would be going down, that you would be a missionary to Kensington, would you have believed it? Absolutely not. Yeah. God bless. So, we, we've already done that bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to keep it. Okay. Well, you want to... God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for watching, if you watched this far. You get a special blessing. <laughs>